Welcome back to session three of Dewey Decimal Classification. This is the last session of the class. Um, let me go over our schedule here again. This is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we started talking about table one last time, and we'll finish that up and then talk a little bit about table two, table three, and table four. We won't go into great detail about any of them, but I do want to give you an overview so you can know what they're used for and where, how some of the numbers that are already built in the schedules are made using these tables. But first of all, just like we did last time, we're going to go over the assignment from last week. So let me zoom in a little bit so you can see these bigger. Okay, and again, please feel free to um, jump in with questions at any time, either type them in the question box or um, let me know that you want to be unmuted so I can unmute your microphone. Um, let's see here. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Let me actually log into um, OCLC connection here. Okay. Okay, the first one was a book called Adding to Your Family Through Adoption, um, and, it, and we are given the information that it combines information about the practice of adoption, including adoption of children from foreign countries, and laws relating to adoption. Um, the fact that it tells you that it has a couple of different aspects should indicate that this is a book that treats the subject of adoption from a couple different disciplines. So we are going to be looking for an interdisciplinary number, which we talked about last time. So let me get connection and web Dewey up over here. There we go. Let's see. And so I would start by browsing for adoption in the relative index. And you'll see that there are a few different options. Get my highlighter here. Um, we have just the word adoption with a number, and then a few with some subdivisions, which are basically the different disciplines that this can appear in. Um, you see that adoption law is one of them. Um, that was one of the disciplines that were covered. But remember, we talked about last week, when you're using Web Dewey anyway, and you have a list like this, the topic with no subdivisions, the number next to that is the interdisciplinary number. And so you really don't necessarily have to go into the schedules, but I would just go in and check and see if there's there are any notes that contradict this, but you can tell pretty well from the results that this is the interdisciplinary number. So since we have a book that treats adoption from a couple different disciplines, the number I would use is 362.734. Are there any questions on that? Okay, the next one is a book called Canned Foods. It sounds super exciting. Um, it says it discusses both home food preservation and commercial food processing. So again, we've got a couple of different disciplines. We're going to be looking at something that covers commercial food processes and something that covers people canning foods in their home. And there you know, might be a couple different ways you could approach this. Again, remember when you're looking for um, topics, 
you might just have to kind of brainstorm some things. Um, I tried canning foods. You could have done canned foods or food preservation or any number of things. It does turn out that canning foods has a valid entry in the relative index. And it has the two topics we're looking for, commercial preservation and home preservation, and they have two different numbers. Again, um, the topic listing that doesn't have a subdivision, the number that's next to that, is usually considered to be the interdisciplinary number. And again, they would just do your full investigation, make sure there aren't any notes in the schedules that contradict this. And I don't see anything to indicate that, so I would consider 664.0282 to be the correct answer. And I have a typo in my um, answer sheet there, so 664.0282. And again, I would say, you know, if you have a fairly small collection, you may not need as specific of a number as that. Um, you know, you could stop at 664.28 for preservation techniques. Again, do what works best for your users, but using the straight up by the book answer, I would say 664.0282 is the answer for this one. So those two were pretty straightforward. Um, you could see the interdisciplinary number in the relative index. Now we're going to look at the next one called You Can Be As Photogenic as a Model, Healthy Diet and Exercise for Teenage Girls. Um, it talks about eating habits and exercise. So again, there's probably you know, a number of ways that you could approach this. Um, I'm going to start by looking up diet in the relative index. And let me think. Um, one thing I should point out here is that there isn't an interdisciplinary number given in the relative index. All of the topics here have um, subdivisions. So we're going to have to do some investigation in the schedules to see if there's any notes that say class interdisciplinary works here. So we have 613.2 for dietetics, which is the Dewey term for things applying to diet. Um, we want to kind of see if there's anything given um, that addresses both diet and physical fitness. And we do see class comprehensive works on diet and physical fitness at 613.7. And so I would definitely investigate that. And if you had put in exercise or physical fitness or something as your search in the relative index, you might have gone to this one first. And so we see here physical fitness. And again, that note tells you class here, comprehensive works on diet and physical fitness. There's the one thing I've been noticing in the newer version of Web Dewey. This one just came out in... You're within the last year or so, and I'm seeing the word comprehensive used a lot of times where they used to pretty much just straight up say interdisciplinary works. So um, comprehensive works, again, is for something that includes both of those things. And so I would put this in 613.7. There was not an interdisciplinary number in the relative index, but the notes in the schedules tell you to put something that deals with both diet and exercise in 613.7. Any questions about that one?
Okay. Um, I got something saying that the audio was out. Um, can other people hear me? Oh, good. I'm back. Excellent. I'm not sure what was going on there, but good to know. So I was saying that, um, again, how far you want to extend Dewey numbers does depend on your collection. And you know, I did not think about this when I was preparing the answer key, but yes, I would say that 613.7043, physical fitness of young people 12 to 20, is also a viable answer for this question. Okay, let's see here. The next one was Dictionary of Child Psychology. And if I recall, we had a book about child psychology in our last assignment, so we should be pretty familiar with the Dewey number, for the base number anyway. Oops, I searched in Dewey numbers, not relative index. So 155.4 is the number for child psychology. And this is where, if you've decided that you want to use the standard subdivisions in Table 1 because you want to keep the dictionaries on a particular topic separate from the general books on a particular topic, then there's going to be nothing in the schedule that will tell you to do so, but you'll just have to know that if you want to extend a number for a dictionary, you need to go to Table 1. Which again, you scroll all the way down here to the tables and click on T1 for Table 1. And so we're looking for a number that would indicate that this is a dictionary. And you click on number three, and you'll see that there aren't any further subdivisions. So because we have a dictionary about child psychology, our full answer is going to be 155.403. And I should note that you want to make sure in the schedules that there weren't any notes telling you to do anything different with the standard subdivision. Remember last time we talked about, you know, adding an extra zero or dropping the zero before you add them, and there aren't any notes that indicate you need to do that. So it's pretty straightforward. You find the base number of 155.4 and then add 03 to indicate that it's a dictionary. The next one is called A Love of Language, and it says that it discusses possible careers in linguistics. This is one where you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell what it's about from the title, but we have a little bit of extra information here. And obviously, if you actually had the book in front of you, you would have more information. So I would start by browsing the relative index for linguistics. And you see that the number for linguistics is 410. And it could be that in your collection this is enough. You're, you, the books about linguistics are all together and it doesn't matter to you to, to emphasize the aspect of um, thinking about linguistics as a career. But if you wanted to add these subdivisions, I would go back to Table 1. And this one is kind of a little bit trickier to know off the top of your head. Um, you kind of have to be familiar with the table and know where to find it. But if you read all the topics, you can see that the standard subdivision for a subject as a profession, occupation, or hobby is 0 to 3. And so it's things like vocational guidance, the choice of vacation, career opportunities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But so the division is zero two three. But one thing you should notice is if you go back to let's see four ten, we are told that 
standard subdivisions are not applied traditionally. They are, this is a case where the zero is dropped. And you can tell, again, it's, it's not quite as straightforward in WebDuty as it is in the print version, but just it sort of sets up the pattern for you, and then you have to know that that means drop the zero before you add a standard subdivision. So in this case, it would be 410.23 instead of 0 0.023. Okay, and the last one is Women Welders in the United States, a directory. And so this is one where you are going to have to choose between which standard subdivision you would add, because there's options. There's ones to reflect that it's about women, and there's standard subdivisions to reflect that it's about, that it is a directory. But first of all, you want to start by finding out what your base number is, and so I would look up welding in the relative index. And the base number that I would use is 651 point, sorry, 671.52. And there is a number that's built for welders. Um, the little puzzle piece next to it tells you that this is built by using um, table 1. But I would double check table 1. And remember, there's a table of preference that tells you the order in which you should um, choose if you have to choose between multiple types. And so if you go to the table of preference, let me see here, um, directories of persons and organizations is T1025. And then let's see here. Oh, biography. Or zero, uh, no, it's not really biography. Let's see. Zero nine two is up here. I mean, I'm losing track of my subdivisions here. I'm thinking I may have made the wrong decision in my answer key. Right, it is a director. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to remember my table of contents here. I guess actually it's not a biography. It's you know it's directory of people. So I would go with directories at 025, and then but you know if you were worried about the fact that it um, deals with um, women in particular, um, I would say you know a groups of people is down here lower in the table of preference. You know the other option that you would probably have would be 08, and so I would say that you should prioritize the directory over groups of people. And so my answer would be 671.52.025. And there were no notes in the schedule telling you to drop the zero or add an extra zero or anything like that in your standard subdivision. So I would just do it as normally done, 025. So that was probably the trickiest one on the assignment, as shown by the fact that I had to double check my own thought process on that. Um, does anybody have any questions? Let's see, um, I have a question saying, where does the 09 for welders come from? That's a good question. Um, I guess it would come from table 1, the 09. Let's see here.
generally 09 is used for either biographies or for people in general. Um, the 08 would have been for particular groups of people, so women, but if you're just talking about any welder possible, if you're talking about how a topic like welding could apply to anyone, then that's my interpretation of why 09 is added for welders. Okay, um, if you think of more questions about the assignment as we're going along, feel free to throw them out there, but we are going to go ahead and continue with this week's session. So again, we're going to be finishing up Table 1, um, especially as it relates to Table 2 when you're dealing with um, either history or geography. And then we'll talk about Table 3, which is used for literature, numbers found in the 800s, and a little bit about Table 4, which is used for languages, numbers found in the 400s. Um, as we talked about last week, the standard subdivisions in Table 1 are optional, but they're recommended for a large number of items within specific topics. Um, we're going to talk about the first four tables. Um, a bridge Dewey only has four tables. Full Dewey does have other two other tables, but we are not going to talk about those in this class is just too much stuff to cram into three sessions. Um, and this is, again, what we talked about last week. This table one is used for standard subdivisions, things like format, the approach or viewpoint of the author, particular people, location in conjunction with table two, which is what we're going to talk about today, or biographical content. So, when may numbers be added from Table 2 for geographic areas and persons? Um, basically, they can be added at any time. Um, again, sort of like the standard subdivision, generally it's assumed that if you need to make a topic more specific by indicating that it refers to a particular geographic area, you can go ahead and add them unless the schedule forbids it, or there are other restrictions, or it would be redundant. If there's a number that already basically includes a geographic area, then you don't need to add it. Um, the thing that's important to remember when using Table 2 is that you can't just add something from Table 2 by itself. You need to add 09 from Table 1 first because this is um, geographic treatment falls under 09. So if you're adding a geographic area in Table 2, you need to add 09 first. Um, this subdivision has been broken down more specifically, and each of these can be subdivided more specifically. Um, for example, the 093 to 099 range covers specific continents, countries, and localities. Um, it can get very specific down to the level of specific towns. Um, if, I, I'm just, as a side note here, you'll see that 09 includes history and geographic treatment. If a book treats a topic from a historical standpoint without a particular geographic area, you can just add 09 by itself and you don't need to further build with Table 2. Um, so you'll see the instructions here under 091 add to 091 numbers from Table 2, and we'll go through how to do this. Um, as another side note, before we get into geography, Table or table 1092 can also be used for biography. Um, you can read the notes that tell you how to do this. Many libraries do not use Dewey for their biographies. They just, you know, have a separate biography section where things are shelved by the subject's last name or something like that. But there is a way to do biographies in Dewey if you so choose. Just So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, you can see there's a lot of notes that tell you there are several different ways to do it using Dewey numbers. And there's even more information in the manual. So if you are thinking of classing your biographies with Dewey numbers, um, definitely go ahead and read all these instructions. Now, 
Now we'll go ahead and talk about the uh, numbers 093 to 099. Those are used for specific continents, countries, etc. Um, usually, this is probably where most of your geographic things will fall. And table 1 tells you to add 09 to a number from table 2. And so that's where these numbers come from, basically. Um, the 09 plus whatever is in table 2 is built for you. So even though sort of conceptually what you're doing is adding 09 from table 1 and then adding something from table 2, you don't always have to go looking at both tables because to a certain extent the numbers are built right into table 1 at least in the um, online version. So here is table 2. Um, you'll see that it has things that basically duplicate what you'll see in table 1. Um, 1 is for areas and regions, things like that. And then 3 through 9, which we saw previously, is 0, 9, 3 through 099. Those are for specific continents, countries, localities. So again, I'm going to show you some of Table 2, but you don't really have to consult both. They are built into um, Table 1. Um, you can see in Table 2, the numbers under, the subdivisions under 1 are for a particular areas or regions or geographic zones, things like frigid zones, temperate zones. They're not specific countries. They're more geographical climate areas, so to speak. And you get into hemispheres, oceans, and sea basins, things like that. Things that aren't really, you know, political or man-made entities are under uh, Table 2, Subdivision 1. Um, and again, from Table 2, the subdivision for biography is 2, which is added to 09 to be 092. But again, like I said, a lot of libraries don't use Dewey numbers for their biographies. So I'm not going to get into a whole lot of um, information about that. And here are those subdivisions for 3 through 9, which are added to 09 to be 093 through 099. Um, Dewey separates things into the ancient world and the modern world. So, for example, um, China in the ancient world gets the subdivision 3.1. So if you had a book with about China in the ancient world, it would, the correct subdivision to add would be 0.9.3.1. Whereas um, China in the modern world is under um, number 5. That's for Asia, and then we see that China is 5-1. So if you're talking about China in the modern world, and if you click on any of these, you'll see for more information about where exactly the cutoff between ancient and modern is as far as years go. Um, but 0951 would be for China in the modern world. Now, just like we talked about last time, um, there are some variations in adding subdivisions. You could have to drop a lead zero, retain a lead zero, add an extra one in. Um, basically, these are all the same as what we did with the standard subdivisions last week, so I won't go into a lot of detail. Um, the last one is the only one that's different. You could end up, if the schedules tell you to do this, um, you could drop the lead zero and the number nine. Since the subdivisions from table two all have to be preceded by zero nine, Sometimes there's the option to drop both the 0 and the 9. So let's see an example. Um, let's say we have a book called Trends in Nursing History. And we will look up nursing in the relative index. And the base number is 610.73. So we'll remember that is what we're adding on to. Then we are, um, this is a general historical treatment. Um, we don't know anything about the particular geographic area, so you don't need to go really far into Table 1. You just need to add 09 for history. And so I would say that is the full 
number for this example. When you just have a history without a particular geographic area, it's as simple as adding 09. Let's do another example. We have a book called Little School on the Prairie, a history of one room, one room rural schools in the Great Plains region. So we do have an, a specific geographic area this time. Um, there is no heading just for one room schools, so we'll class this book with schools and their activities at 371. Notice that there is a pattern given for the standard subdivisions that's a variation. Um, there are two zeros before the numbers. So that would mean that historical and geographic treatment is at 371.009 instead of just 09. So that's our base number, 371.009. But if you choose to, again, in smaller collections, you may not necessarily need to do this, but if you want to add a subdivision that reflects the fact that this is about the Great Plains, you would look at Table 2, and we are looking in the modern world, and we want to go into North America, because we're talking about the Great Plains of the United States. Now you can see in the options under North America, you have uh, 73 is the subdivision for just United States in general, but then it has a range of numbers for specific states and regions of states. And so now we have the options of specific areas of states, and you might not necessarily know which of these the Great Plains fits into. Um, you could click through all of them and read the notes. Um, my guess would be Western United States. And it turns out that that is correct. If you go under 78 for Western United States, it tells you class here, Great Plains. And in case you don't necessarily want to just browse through the tables trying to figure out what the correct subdivision is, you can also browse for geographical terms in the relative index. And if you look in the relative index for Great Plains, you will get a number that has T2 in front of it. This tells you that this is not a full Dewey number on its own, it is the subdivision from Table 2. So we've determined either way, whether you do Table 2 or whether you look in the relative index, you will determine that Great Plains falls under the subdivision of 7-8. So the full number for this one would be 371.00978. The 009 reflects that it's a history, and that the schedules told us we needed to add an extra zero, and then 7H is the subdivision for Great Plains. Any questions about that one? Okay, let's do another example. We have a book called Sleepers, an encyclopedia of Soviet Union spycraft. Um, you know, again, you could go through the process in the relative index of trying to figure out exactly what term to use. Um, again, we're at a disadvantage here, not actually having a real book in front of us, but I will tell you that we decided that looking at the content of it, it should be classed in espionage, um, which is under foreign policy. here. Um, espionage is under 372.12. So that would be our base number, and then we have to decide what subdivisions we're going to add. Again, remember, this is if you have a large enough collection where subdivisions are useful. Um, this note says that standard subdivisions are used, and some of the numbers, like 093 and 099, have been built for you, so we don't necessarily have to go and consult the tables. We can just look here in the schedules. So we click on that one, but here is a note that says, do not use these for specific nations, and we do. We're talking about Russia in this case, so um, these numbers would just be used if we were talking about kind of more generally. Um, 
So for a particular nation, class in 327.123 to 129. So again, this is just kind of the convolutedness of navigating the Dewey schedules. So when you go here, it tells you, basically this is a case in which you're told to drop the 0, 09. Um, the subdivisions are used, but instead of having a 0, 09 in there, 0, 9, 1, 2, 3, or whatever, um, the 0, 09 is dropped, and it tells you that added to the number 327.12, the number from table 2. So we'll go to table 2, and it tells us that the correct subdivision for Russia is 47. So we want to classify it with espionage and subversion, specifically relating to Russia, so 327.1247. And it is an encyclopedia, so in this case, you could add a 0, 3 if you needed to subdivide that specifically. You know, I think there would probably be pretty few collections in which you would necessarily need a number that specific. Um, remember, there was a note that says to add 0, 0 for standard subdivisions. So this is a really, really, really long Dewey number, 327.1247003, if you wanted to fully reflect both the geographic aspect of it and add a standard subdivision for um, the fact that it's encyclopedia. And so you'll notice just when we talked about table one, we said when it comes to standard subdivisions, you have to choose one or the other. But when you have a geographic subdivision, you can also go ahead and add a subdivision from table one if it's useful. If you think that your patrons would benefit from having a number that specific. Let's do another example. We have a guide to hostels in Spain. So if you looked up hostels in the relative index, you would be given that number. Now normally they are classed at 910.466. Um, there's a note here that tells you for specific countries, do not class here, class in 913 to 919. And there will be a table here telling us how to add the subdivisions. The note down here at the bottom tells you how these numbers were built. They're in the schedule, so you don't have to look at the tables, but this is just telling you how they were built. You start off with the base number 91, and then the table will tell you how to add your subdivisions. Um, the notes tell you what the subdivisions are for. 0, 06 is the subdivision for facilities for travelers, so that's why you added 0, 06. So we start with the base number of 91. We add the number from table 2, so 4, 06 is the number for Spain. Now you'll notice that when you add standard subdivisions, it's okay, or when you add the subdivisions, um, it's okay if you didn't have a full three-digit Dewey number, you just add one digit before the decimal point and one digit after. So we started with 91, now we have 914.6. So we go back to our table and add the 0, 06, so now we have 914.606. And so that would be the um, guide to hostels in Spain. The 9-1 numbers are for geography and travel in general. The 4-6 represents Spain, and then the 0-6 is for um, facilities for travelers. So the fact that it's about hostels um, go, is why that is our number. Any questions about that example?
Okay, let's go on to our next example. We have a book called Decades of Change, A History of Ghana, 1960 to 2000. Um, I should mention here that the 900 class in Dewey is used for a general geographical or historical treatment of a country. So if you're talking kind of about the whole history of a country in general, rather than just a specific topic as it happened in a country, um, the, instead of just adding a subdivision, you'll be using a 900 number. So if you browse the relative index, you can see that there's a number for Ghana, there's um, time periods for some numbers for particular time periods are um, listed. These numbers are built using numbers from Table 2, although they generally do appear in the schedule, so you don't necessarily need to worry about building them yourself. So if you look at that number for Ghana, you can see that um, there's a few kind of general time periods built in here. Ours was 1960 to 2000, so we want to go to that last one from 1957 onward. There are a couple of more specific breakdowns, but ours kind of covers generally the whole period. So I would say that what we're working with here is 966.705. So that would be, I mean, we don't really have any other standard subdivisions or anything to use, so 966.705 would be my final answer for this one. Are there any questions about historical and geographical treatments in general or building numbers from Table 2? Because we're going to move on to um, Table 3 pretty soon. I know we're doing this all pretty fast. Um, I do just want to kind of expose you to all these tables. Obviously, we're not pre presenting a comprehensive um, information about all of them, but I want to make sure you know where these numbers come from. So table two is used with numbers from any class of Dewey. Um, by contrast, table three is only used with numbers in the 800s. Um, we have a question coming in. So why are some numbers built but not all? Um, just to clarify, do you mean why do some numbers have the geographical subdivisions and so on already built into them in the schedules and why for some you have to go and do it yourself? Um, that is an excellent question and it's one I don't necessarily know um, other than that's just the way it is, which I know is not a very unsatisfying, not very satisfying answer. Um, I guess I would say probably, my best guess would be that um, as Dewey has been revised and added to, you know, it's become more of a collaborative effort and, you know, it's not no longer just, you know, Melville Dewey writing it by himself. And so probably some people have gone ahead and expanded it as they see necessary while um, other areas are not as well expanded. Um, I don't know. I might feel bad that I can't give you a more <laughs> definite answer than that. but. Um, the more I learn about Dewey, the more I see inconsistencies in you know, the patterns for standard subdivisions and why some numbers are built into the schedules. So I'm afraid I can't give you a really good answer on that one, but it, you know, if, if you get frustrated with about it, then um, that's just the way Dewey is, basically. So if you're using Table 3 to talk about particular types of literature, um, these numbers only pertain to um, Dewey numbers in the 800s. They are added as instructed in the schedules and the table. Um, and this is another case where sometimes you will see the numbers already built into the schedule. And sometimes you may need to um, build them yourself from table three. Um, you'll notice that works of literature themselves can be classed here in the 800s. Um, Works of fiction can be assigned Dewey numbers, though most libraries choose not to use them. I would say probably the majority of libraries have a separate fiction section where books are just shelved by author name, but, and they mostly use the 800s for books about literature rather than um, works of literature themselves. Though, you know, I have seen libraries that um, put sort of collections of essays or short stories by different authors in the 800s.
So, it, you know, the note says you can put the works of literature themselves here or works about literature. Most of the time it's used for the latter. You'll notice in the 800s that zeros are dropped for the standard subdivisions to build numbers like 801, 802, 803. Um, instead of being 800.03 for a dictionary, it's just 803. The other option, other than the standard subdivisions, is 810 through 890. These are literatures of specific languages. The 800 numbers are set up according to whatever language the work was written in. So you choose your number, your base number, based on the language. If you have a book that was written by an, in English by an American, you know that your number is going to start with 81 and then something else for the third digit. If it's German, it's going to be 83 and so on and so forth. And you'll notice there is a distinction between um, works in English written by Americans and work in English written by people from England. Once you have the base number from your 800s, you can add numbers from Table 3 to more accurately describe your item. So the instructions tell you basically to add whatever number is here, 1, 2, 3 through 8, um, add that to the first two numbers, so 81 for American English, 83 for German, etc. Um, I do also want to mention that there are sort of two subtables of Table 3. Um, 3A is for works by or about one author, and 3B is for works by or about multiple authors. The subdivisions are basically the same, but they're a little bit different, and they all reflect whatever form it is you're dealing with, poetry, drama, fiction, essays, and so on and so forth. So we'll first deal with uh, Table 3A, which deals with works by or about one author. Um, if they're only writing in one language and there's only one form, you know, it's only poetry or it's only essays, um, it's pretty simple. You determine the language literature in which the author wrote, find the base number from the schedules, so things like 81 or 82 or 83, etc. Determine the form of the work and find the form number in Table 3 and add to the base number. Most of these languages already have the numbers built into the schedule, so you don't actually have to do the building in Table 3, but I just wanted you to know where these numbers come from. So let's say we have a book called From the Center of the Earth to the Moon, Travels with Jules Verne, and it's a critique of Jules Verne's works, which were novels. Um, you would have to know that he wrote in French. The number for the base number for French is eight four, and then under eight four you have subdivisions for specific forms of French literature. And you can see that in full Dewey there are a number of um, options for time periods. We're not going to worry about those. Those are kind of optional and they don't exist in a bridge Dewey. Um, we're just going to go down here to the bottom. Um, like I said, he wrote novels, so that's fiction. So 843 would be the number that we want. And again, this is built from table 3. You don't have to go over to the table, but you'll see that 3 is the subdivision for fiction. And so I would classify this with um, 843. One thing to remember with um, Dewey was that if you were classing your fiction in a Dewey number, the actual work by an author would also be classed at 843. Books by Jules Verne and books about Jules Verne would both be at 843 if you were doing your Dewey numbers, your fiction in the 800s. But again, I would say that most libraries don't. They would have a separate fiction section where it would be shelved under V for Vern. So that was straightforward. One author, one language, one form. Now we have a work, still one author, still one language, but let's say it has multiple forms. You know, maybe it has poems and short stories or short stories and essays or something like that. Um, again, you start by determining what language it's written in and find the base number in the 800s. And when you come to choosing between the form, you choose for the form the author is chiefly known for. 
Um, it doesn't really matter. You know, you don't have to say, well, this book is 60% poetry and 40% fiction. Go with whatever the author is chiefly known for. And then, just like we did before, choose that. So if he was chiefly known for fiction, you know, add three for your last digit to whatever your base number was, 8-1 or 8-2 or 8-3. Um, if you still have one author, but there are more than one, but it's an author who generally writes in more than one language, Um, it says to determine the language used last by the author and find the base number other unless the other language is predominant in the particular book that you're working with. So if you have somebody who mostly writes in English, but their last book was in English and French, unless the book is like 90% French, because the author is mostly written in English, you would use the base number for English. Um, you'll notice that, like I said, there's a distinction between books written in English by Americans and books written in English by um, people who are British. And sometimes you'll have authors who change citizenship. They were born in England, but then they came over to America and they became American citizens. Um, use the num literature number for the author's adopted citizenship. So in that case, where somebody changed from British to American citizenship, you would use 8.1 for um, American English literature. So those were books written by one author. Any questions about that before we go on to multiple authors? Okay, um, with multiple authors, remember you're supposed to use table 3 instead of table 3A. Again, most of these numbers are built for you already in the schedules. So determine whatever language you're write, working with. Determine the form, find the appropriate number in table 3B, and add it to base number. Um, and then, if you we're not going to go into detail about subdividing by time periods or specific genres, but remember those numbers do exist in full Dewey. Um, let's see, we have a question coming in asking if translations are classed under their original language. That is an excellent question. Um, I do not know the answer to that off the top of my head. Um, let me look in Dewey really quick and see if there are, if I can find um, instructions. Let me look at the 800s. I feel like they should have instructions for this. Let's see. Ah, literature is classed by the language in which originally written. Yes, you are exactly right. And let's see here. Okay. So yes, translations go with the language in which they were originally written. So for multiple authors writing in one language, but in one form, so they're all essays, or they're all poems, or they're all short stories, it's pretty much the same process as when using the table 3A. Um, again, if you the contents are limited by time period or specific genre, you can add those subdivisions that we're not really going to go in right now. Um, if you have works by or about multiple authors writing in one language still, but there's multiple forms, so poems and essays and short stories, etc. Um, determine the language and literature, and in this case you might consider using just the base number, so 810 or 820, and not adding any subdivision to reflect a particular form since you have multiple forms. You know, remember the instructions for one author were to go with the form that the author is best known for. If you have multiple authors you can't really do that because they might all be known for different things. So. Most likely you would probably end up using the full base number of, that ends in a zero. 
if you have multiple authors writing in two languages, um, in this case, again, with multiple authors, you can't really go with the one that they most recently wrote in, so you would go with the one coming first in the schedules, unless otherwise instructed. So again, you could add the subdivisions for time period and genre, but we're not going to go that far right now because I don't think we have large enough collections to render that necessary. So choose with the base number for whichever language comes first. So if you had, um, let's see, um, German and French, for example, German is 8.3 and French is 8.4, so you would go with German and then add, if it was, let's say it was short stories, so for fiction it would be 8.3.3. Any questions about Table 3 before we move on to Table 4 for languages? Okay, Table 4 again is a table that can only be used with a particular class of Dewey numbers. It can only be used with numbers in the 400s. Those deal with languages. Um, subdivisions are added as instructed in the schedules as in the and in the table. The language subdivision 3 takes the place of standard subdivision 03 for dictionaries. So a dictionary for English would be at 423, not 420.3. Um, another confusing thing about the table 4 subdivisions is um, subdivision 5 for grammar and subdivision 8 for standard usage. Um, grammar is the more technical version for linguists who study the language, while subdivision 8, standard usage of the language, is for students learning the rules of grammar. So just keep that in mind. So here are the 400 numbers. 410 is for linguistics, and then the specific languages are in 420 through 490. And you can see the options here. Um, notice that there's no division between American and other English the way there is in literature. Table 4 lists the various types of subdivisions for languages, so encyclopedias and concordances, etc., etc. Some of the most common subdivisions are 1 through 5, dictionaries, grammars, um, etymology, writing systems, meaning like alphabets, things like that. So let's say we have a book called Get Along Little Doggies, Translating Cowboy Expressions. So it's about English, but a particular slang dialect of English. So we're looking at subdivisions of English for, we're in 420, so the base number is 42. Um, in this case, the numbers have been built for you. You don't have to consult Table 4, but that is where they come from, just so you know. Um, what we're looking here, let's see, this is probably most likely a historical and geographic variation. Um, it was used by cowboys of a particular time period. Um, yeah, I'm assuming that, based on the title of the book. If we had the book in front of us, for sure we would know. Um, you'll also see that the note here says that slang is included in here, so that would make me decide that we should definitely use the the um, standard subdivision or the subdivision seven from table four. So you'll see that the schedule tells you how to build this number. Um, instructions under four twenty one to four twenty eight. The instructions that that's referring to says add to base number 42 the numbers from table 4. So I would put this book at 427. Here's another example. El Alfabeto um, gives illustrated sentences for the letters of the Spanish alphabet. So 46 is the base number for Spanish. We're in the 460s. And again, the instructions are given here at the base number 46, the numbers from table 4. But again, the numbers built for you. If you go into 461, that is where writing systems are. I 
Again, just so you know where it's coming from, the note on this screen tells you that where the um, number is coming from. You kind of have to know, if you're actually looking up in Table 4 to build a number, you have to know that um, description and analysis of the standard form of the language is where you're looking, and that writing systems fall under there. So I would classify this with 461. Are there any questions about Table 4? Okay, well, that is the content for this week. Um, if you have any more questions, go ahead and ask. And if all, as always, I'm available throughout the week through email or over the phone if you have questions. Um, one thing I did want to mention, I mentioned it in the email, and the link is on the course webpage, but um, I'll also show you the link here. I have a course evaluation survey available. I'm always interested in how I can improve the course. Um, for the next time I offer it, so please take a moment. It's really pretty short. Um, I would love to have your feedback. Let's see. Let me go back. I skipped the assignment page. Um, there is one more assignment. Um, we will not have a, an in-class session to discuss it, but after the deadline is passed um, at 8 a.m. next Tuesday, I will go ahead and post the answers to the course webpage, and I'll send out an email telling you that that's available, so you can still um, see the answers, and if you have questions about them, if you've got something different, you know, definitely you can contact me, and um, I will explain how I got my answer. Um, let's see, questions coming in. Okay, it looks like we are all right for questions, so let's see, oops, more questions. Let's see, I have a question. So in addition to the answers, could you also include a handout showing, I'm guessing that means how I got the answers. Yes, I absolutely will. I will, um, it will, the answer sheet will be much more thorough than the ones I'm showing here in class. I will definitely include paragraphs showing where the answers came from. Um, I have a question about addressing how to shorten numbers or choose which number if your library's collection only goes to a certain point past the decimal. That's an excellent question. Um, Yes, um, let's see, that's a good question. Um, for example, Lincoln City Library only goes to three decimal places. Um, a lot of libraries do have policies like that. Um, they only go to a certain number of decimal places. Obviously, some of the really long numbers we were looking at in class will not work for everybody. Um, I actually had somebody email me um, this this week about that question. Um, one, and so, you know, if you have made the decision that you only go to three decimal places, then that's fine. Um, if you want to kind of get a feel for what other people have done, one resource that I would suggest is a service, a free service put out by OCLC called Classify. Um, the URL is classify.oclc.org. Um, and if you have a book and you want to put in the title, Let's see, I'm trying to think of an example here. I'm going to pull up the example from my email because I know that I thought it was a really good example of what to do here. Well, hang on one second. So I had a book called Freight Gra Train Graffiti. Spell while I'm talking. And so if you had, let's say, a copy cataloging record that came in with the big long number of 751.73.093, um, you could go on here and see that these are based on libraries with their holdings in WorldCat through OCLC. You can see that most people use that big number, but a lot of some other people truncated it at 751.73, and so I would consider that a good um, 
kind of way to get a feel for what's a reasonable place to truncate the number. You know, I know that a lot of libraries do just ha pick, you know, three digits past the decimal places, but according to the hierarchy of, of Dewey, if you have the time and the resources to think about it, um, it's better in general to, you know, cut off your numbers at a place that logically makes sense within Dewey. Um, you wouldn't want this number to add, end in a zero, for example, because that wouldn't be a valid Dewey number. Um, 751.730 numbers don't usually end in zero um, after the decimal place. So I would highly recommend um, Classify from OCLC as a resource for kind of getting a feel for what other people are doing with their Dewey numbers. Any other questions? All right, well, um, if there are no other questions, then um, I've enjoyed having you all in class. Um, Thank you for attending, and if you have any questions as you're working on your assignments, feel free to contact me, and in the future, if you have questions about Dewey or any other thing cataloging related, please, you know how to get in touch with me, so please do not hesitate to send me an email or give me a call.